gets a death ward off for like more than one and a half seconds, then something really good happened. Yeah. There's a storm, a shaman, and a shake. Be a buff if he had a worse ultimate that just did something yeah, simple yeah, and easy I to execute. Agree. If you'd replace death ward with just like, I don't know, an another like cast like spell that's just like an average non ultimate spell, huh. Brooklyn would actually be a better hero. I agree. Really? Dota. Yeah. yeah. Because you're a five, you just don't get to sit there channeling a death word in that's killing people except in pub game. Crystal that's Maiden's true. ult needed to get buffed like twenty times before yep. people are like, oh okay. Yep. And then in classic form everyone's like, okay, great. We'll give her a farming <laughs> position. BKB now that her ult's good. So maybe that's the slippery slope that a witch doctor may be on. However, if you rush eggs on Witch Doctor, now hear me out guys. Uh -oh. Okay. Let's hear it. If it's pretty good. <laughs> okay. Oh. You could do it in the enemy fountain. Heck of a you need eggs and you need BKB. Yeah. And yeah, and then if you're by that point, like if, if you're a support with those items, your enemies have four stops, they're just gonna kite you. Listen, we, we don't need to spend this much time on my horrendous yeah, yeah. itemization. Let's just move on to so the imagine real if talk. Witch Doctor had Bane's <laughs> ultimate. That would be an amazing hero. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think Bane would no longer get picked. Yeah. All right, no. so we haven't storm. talked at all about yeah. Storm. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's hit it. It's a good Storm game. Uh, there's lack of uh, things to really control or cause the Storm too many problems. There is, you know, Dismember as well as the Rubik Telekinesis, but this uh, right now does look like a pretty straightforward, easy to play Storm game. Yeah, and it's something that brought maybe success earlier uh, against their Mineski series, as he picked it twice, I believe. Sure. We see a ban out for the Spectre. We have seen uh, Ame pick Spectre before and do great on that. So respect ban there from Team Secret. And a late game Pugda ban. Hmm. Magical That's... damage? Mm hmm. I, th I still think Life Stealer is good. I... They ban out Pugna, so maybe you can't decrepify someone. He's got a Storm Sphere that he can jump into. I mean, yeah, it's not great whenever you have to pick it into a Morphe, it's, but like you yeah. said, the uh, support, it's like you can't not pick spells into a Rubik. Ursa. Ursa. I, hmm. A bit more damage output. Without I any think... melee core to go against? Oh, my. Like it's Pudge. Pudge. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, theoretically amazing against Pudge. Theoretically, but they have a lot of ways to kind of stop that Ursa, right? You got Cask, you got uh, Morph, you got Rubik. Yeah, they've got stuns, but it's not like amazing hiding. Like you, mm. you once you throw that lift and he's gonna phase drums after That's you or something, he's gonna look to just chase you down. Okay. Um but I think the core to core matchup, much as how Life Stealer would suffer against a Morphling, or similarly suffers to an extent. Yep. yep. It gives you objective taking as far as Roshan goes. You still don't have that amazing tower push. Shaman and Nature's Prophet give you a little. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see who's the core between the Nature's Prophet and Shaker because I, I would I wouldn't expect um, X Nova to play like a Shaker or yeah. like to me oh, like he, of these heroes I only really see him playing Nature's Prophet which means I guess Shaker is actually maybe the three position. And an Alchemist coming out from Team Secret. Wow, money hmm. maker. Ah, are they going to get that much space, boys? Uh, Storm is a hero that maybe will allow him to get some space here. We'll see how good a laning stage LGD have because if they do uh, get like that fast phase boots drums on Ursa, they can look to invade that enemy jungle. Get Storm active online early. I'd like to see Storm to play faster tempo and not go for like a greedier Bloodstone build. Yeah. yeah. Considering there's an Alchemist in the game, I think you need to go maybe just like a tread Kaya fast. Orchid. Yeah, Kai Orchid or just straight Orchid, whatever it may be. I think LGD need to play fast tempo. Mm hmm. All right. I agree. Uh, Tsunami, what are you thinking about this game, buddy? Yeah, I think because Alchemist and Storm Story kind of have the same dynamic right now in, in their ideal positions, which is they come back to the lane, they'll push it out, they'll go back to the jungle, farm it out, but a Storm Spirit's never going to beat an Alchemist in that regard, so I agree with Gods that Storm Spirit needs to keep up a higher pace, especially when he has an Ursa on his team, because yet again, if this game goes past, I'll, I'll give them maybe like 15 more minutes than I did last time, I said 20 minutes last time. Oh my goodness. This time, if they can't get it, if they can't get like solid tier 3 towers before like 35 minutes, I think Secret just have the late game locked right. and loaded. All right, all right, well, according to our expert analysts, they have about... 35 minutes yes. to win this game. Quote me on that. Everybody get your clocks ready. That's and a get grand, that grand guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do have uh, one fun fact. I don't think that Storm Spirit's been picked in a game that Blitz Dota has not casted. So I do have a challenge. If Blitz does not say something positive about Storm, I will let him host the next panel. <laughs> Pay attention. We have Blitz Dota and Capitalist coming up for this game, too. Prepare for battle.
You can always rely on Slacks as host to pull in the most relevant of stats. We have indeed only Storm Game for Blitz Dota. I like it. And you're not supposed to say anything positive. I mean, mm -hmm. do you want to host the next panel? No, not at all. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I, I know I love talking about the hero, but it feels like people are tired of hearing me just like wax poetic about how Storm works and like all the little mechanic stuff. Well, will... you you did seem very confident mm -hmm. that LGD was going to win. And it, to me, it didn't sound like it was about the storm. No, I think that, uh, well, I just like their lineup. Although, I liked their lineup last game when they got <laughs> well, warped. Their lineup has a storm, so it's kind of about a storm. I, it sounded to me like you also didn't like Secret's uh, choice of the Alchemist last pick. Uh, I don't know. It feels a little bit greedy. And I feel like if LGD... Uh, like, the point of Ursa Storm is always really nice because you get you an Aegis really early. And I think Storm is just simply the best Aegis hero in Dota. They're really going to challenge this Ursa for the Boundary Runes, and they will win. The Ursa not willing to take the fight to the extra two supports standing behind him. Yeah, the way this is going to work, though, is because uh, because you have Ursa versus Pudge, you kind of have to, like, dual lane like this and yeah. just, like, hit the Ursa repeatedly. And I'm not sure if Rubik Pudge is going to be able to deal with Shaman Ursa. I mean, that is a very big difference from the last game. Like, Zai had a totally free lane. The support he was matched up couldn't do anything against him, and the carry that he was matched up doesn't have a whole lot of lane presence. Ursa has some of the highest lane presence out of all the heroes. Yeah, I will say Alk, though, is very good against Nature's Prophet. Like, conceptually speaking, uh, you have a hero that just gives away Treants. That's, that's how you look at this, is any time he summons Treants, that's an extra, like, 100 gold for uh, mid one, like as the game goes later. Right. FY. I think he actually could have gotten more of a block there on, on Puppy if he just stayed in the trees where he was at, but does get a little damage on the opposing support. And the Witch Doctor is kind of good against the, the Furion as well when it comes to laning phase, simply because you do have the paralyzing cast to help you deal with the trance. FY doing a good job of making sure that doesn't manage to get off the easy camp pull. What about the mid matchup, Storm versus Morphling? Is that a is that a good lane for Storm? Uh, I wouldn't say it's a good lane for Storm, but I don't think it's like a terrible lane for Storm. Okay. Like I I, I think that this lane is like yeah, it's mm, if I had to put it in numbers, I think it might be like 55, 45. Like it's not terrible, but uh, you have to use Remnant to farm a lot. And if Nisha picks up an early wand, the lane becomes a lot easier for him. Okay. Overall, how does the matchup of Storm versus Morph? Because isn't it good for Storm? Oh, it's up against Morphling. Like later on into the game, it's fantastic because right. you want a hero that can like instantly burst. And if you zip like half across the map, you're going to get kills onto the Morph. Yeah. Like especially if you pick up Orchid before he can pick up Lincoln's or Manta, your hero will always feel somewhat effective against him. Well, that timing's going to be. Particularly important, they're going at it once again in this bottom lane. The Fate Bolt is slowing down some of the damage from the Ursa, but the Swipes are building up, and that is going to be your first blood for X Nova. Sure enough, Zai is not going to have the same kind of free lane he had last time. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, this was my concern off the bat. It was, does Rubik Pudge really beat Ursa yeah. Shaman? Like, those are both lane dominating heroes. Uh, you're going to put a lot on Zai again. Obviously, Seeker thinks that it's a really, really good hero, but. I don't know. Like, the, the main reason I favor LGD's lineup is because I think it plays very quick. I, I think, like, conceptually, Secret's lineup is quite good. Like, the Alchemist is quite nice against both the Storm and the Nature's Prophet. Like, Alk late game, by the way, is great versus Storm. Because Storm never really has the opportunity to kill you. Isn't it pretty bad versus Ursa, though? Uh, yeah, I think so. It, it's... What uh, LGD should try to do is just speed up the pace of the game and let maybe carry them. Yeah. Like, let the Storm be the true one position in this game, essentially. That's that's kind of like where I was going with the um, the draft advantage for LGD. Is I, I felt like because of the Ursa, this is such a good Ursa game that LGD should just be able to, to take over at some point and just start trashing the, the Morph and the uh, the Alchemist. And obviously, the supports are going to be food. The Pudge doesn't have a good lane against the Ursa either. As long as LGD can play fast enough against Team Secret and punish them for their greed this time around, they may be able to walk away with a win and forcing it to a game three. 
Mid one, where are you off to? Stacking up some camps? All right, fair enough. Oh, that's so unlucky for uh, Nisha mid. Maybe he's picked up both the runes in this game. Like, that helps the matchup a lot. Mm. You're gonna see. Maybe he's gonna try and go for this kill onto Nisha, has the haste rune. Now, Nisha is actually battling with him, but the fairy fire pops. Nisha realizing he can't actually take this battle anymore. Bottle charge is gonna help him out a little bit more. Top lane, a big hit from the enchant totem is just enough to secure the kill onto Puppy. They're gonna trade out the two supports here in the top lane. Yeah. That's not that bad of a trade, I think, for the Alk. I, I think for the Alk, as long as your lane goes 50-50, you're, you're perfectly happy, I think, with how everything's going. As he's going to go for... It looks like he's not going to go for the standard build. In fact, uh, if you click mid one, he's, in fact, going to go for... Presser. Okay, early medallion. Yeah. Oh, bounty runes? You really need to fight over it. Yes, LGD do manage to snag that one away. Ame grabs it away from the Pudge. He's going to pay for it with his life potentially, but first he's going to be able to kill Zai. Now the TP in from Chalice with the Shackles onto the Witch Doctor. That should be a second kill here as a great Sprout nice, blocks bro. him in. Puppy is able to eat through two of the trees. One if hit. it was a high ground miss, or there's the Aether Shock. We'll be able to finish off the kill. Four to two now to the favor of LGD. And he made him use half of his Tangos. That's also true. That's 60 gold down the drain. Puppy's poor already, man. Like that, <laughs> every bit matters. He's got 12 yeah, what's, gold what's on him. What's his net worth at right now? What is that percentage-wise? That's 60 gold. It's a healthy amount. Only at 800 gold. Only at 800 net worth. It's almost 10% of his net worth. God. Not a rich man whatsoever. Doing well for CS. Pretty much everywhere. The Furion is doing pretty well, and then Ursa and Storm at the top here. Storm is going to fight Nisha for the rune. Regeneration picked up by Nisha, though. And maybe we'll be forced to zip away. There is an open shrine, because apparently the top lane's going so well. And I guess it's in part because of the Furion. He doesn't really need that shrine. Bottom lane, Ame. It's a lot of damage on to Zai. Really surprised that Zai turned around at all. Yeah, and Zai's built this game. Going for the level of Flesh Sheep doesn't even help him. Uh, you're not going to out-regen the Fury Swipes. He's already got seven on him. Just be so careful at all times. As oh, good steal by FY. Taking away all those e easy camp and X Nova. Making sure that mid one can't farm this mid camp so easily either. It's a little damage on a puppy. The Maledict goes on FY though. And they're going to try and punish this mid one. Doesn't have the stun, but Yapsor is here, and they've already got the damage on the FY. He's going to take out. That's why FY turns around, goes for the Fisher to see if he can bail out X Nova, but X Nova's not going to make it away either. They try and stop mid one's farm, but they end up just adding to it as he gets to be a part of two different kills, one of which he gets the last hit on. Not fantastic for them, as they made that aggressive rotation to try to put some pressure and instead giving up the kills. Uh, now Nisha. Are they giving up his tower, up too? As a result, with no supports here, Secret funnels back into this lane and will be able to deny the safe lane tower. It's okay, I think, for the Alk, just because he wants to be hitting the jungle up anyways, but uh, it doesn't feel good losing that mid tower because what will end up happening next is the Nature's Prophet is going to look for opportunities to try to take uh, the mid tower just by TPing in and yep. pressuring it with, uh, with the Storm Strait. Like, that's the ideal move that you make right now, is to try to pressure Nisha out of his lane. Don't make it easy for him to just trade out farm, because he is catching up now, if you look at the net worth. He could take bottom as well. They are, they're in a really good position. The Ursa is forced back Zai. They've got a Siege Wagon still alive here, and they've got the wraparound with the Shackles now onto Zai. Look at the Fury Swipes go with now the Enrage up. Ame makes even shorter work of his Pudge. And Furion thinking about TPing, but it may not even be needed considering they had three range creeps and a siege and another Dyer's wave coming in. This is looking like uh, LGD do not need any assistance in taking bottom. Yeah, and they are doing such a good job. Oh, FY, he's really trying to pressure this area, really trying to make sure the Alchemist isn't free farming, but they gotta be more careful and not just giving away these kills. It looks like FY is gonna indeed take out from the Maledict here. They may be able to get a counter kill on a puppy. They need the right kind of tramp rocks, but unfortunately, that round of treants did actually die. Puppy, let's go for the TP out. And should be successful over the bottom lane. Zai being chased again. He's level four. Ami is level seven right now. What a massive difference. This is what it looks like when Zai is not able to have that kind of good game, good laning phase. He's not going to have much of an impact in this game at this point.
Yeah, and it looks like they want to go on him again as... I mean, just... was hiding in the tree line, but... They're doing everything they can to shut him down. They even denied the catapult as a team. But look over here as mid one in the jungle. Farming all of this up. The long jump in Long jump, maybe. It's gonna pull him back and blow him up. And this is gonna be a large part of the creeps being mopped up for LGD. And this is what we were talking about with the aggressive lineup uh, featuring the Storm Spirit. They wanna be as aggro as possible in the jungle, make their way towards mid lane. That's exactly what they're gonna Nisha do. Nisha is already at half health. FY comes charging and hits the Enchant Totem after Shock, stunning up Nisha for a moment. He still gets off the waveform though, will be able to get away, but the damage has been done to the heroes and they can't, they're not in a good position to fight right now. So it looks like this mid tower could die. But Alchemist is not going to give it up without a fight. Mid one now comes in, throws out the acid, the paralyzing casket. A bounce between only heroes here with the Maledict on it. Charles is in trouble. He goes for the sprout, wanted to TP away, but didn't have a chance. What a great cast from Puppy. Secures a kill, protects that mid tier one tower. 10 minute bounty runes though. Zai, he's going to give up his life to ensure one of them here, but he's going to feed Ame again. I really like the move uh, both teams made, by the way. We talked about how once LGD, they take the top tower, the Nature's Prophet wants to rotate into mid. Uh, Sandwich, take the mid tower himself, and then play into the jungle. And that's exactly what they went for. And Secret uh, also made a good move of their own by choosing to defend that. They brought everyone, including the Alkin. I think you can't just give up this tower for free. Like, once you lose this tower as an Alk player, your game becomes so much harder. And people might be wondering why. It's because you no longer have to smoke to make aggressive maneuvers in. Plus, uh, you have to consistently place wards around this mid lane and into your own jungle just to make life easier for yourself. I feel like uh, there's a really good stat out there somewhere, if Nahaz is listening, where there's got to be some sort of win rate about alchemists who lose their mid tier one tower. It's got to be so bad if it's, you know, you lose your mid tier one tower before 10 minutes. Yeah, that's why here's like Timber, aside from the whole melee thing, as Ame has made his way over here too, as Puppy's ult instantly gets countered by that fissure. Nisha just backing up this Ursa and you see that LGD they're prioritizing like very heavily bringing whatever cores they can to try to take this mid tower uh, but secret is always responding yeah. and the reason for this is just because of that like protect your Alps jungle it feels like it's like oh well the tower's gonna die anyways no make it as hard as you can for LGD don't just give up that tower uh, for free yeah and considering the pace at which Alchemist does farm Getting an extra minute or two can make a world of difference. As you can see, he's building up the Radiance right now. Has a thousand net worth lead on the Ursa, but he needs a little bit more. And they're trying to get the kill right now onto X Nova. Just going to push him back. Not able to get any disables. Maybe setting up on mid lane. Ame, he tried for this tower earlier. He's going to go for it again. They're going to bring Chalice as well. The waveform out from Nisha. This is finally going to be, it seems like, LGD. Getting this mid-tier one tower, Secret can no longer defend it, so 12 minutes is when it falls. Yeah, and so the second hidden factor of this too is that it opens up Roshan, and you really want to get an H out on the Storm as fast as possible so you can play really aggressive. I'd like it anyways to go on the Storm. Yeah, they, I'm, I'm sure he's going to TP, right? Uh, I would imagine so. Like, I, I just think that Storm on Aegis is, or Aegis on Storm is way too good. He's probably just kind of like showing himself in another lane, helping disguise the fact that Ursa is currently doing Roshan. Oh no, I, I think they're just gonna straight up give it to uh Really gonna get a Tame, huh? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's almost like too early for Storm to make use of an Aether. Yeah, I could see that being the case. He doesn't really have items anyways. Yeah. Plus Ame's lead is pretty big. Like in terms of how much net worth that he actually puts out. And he's most likely your frontliner. Well, it just gets worse and worse for Team Secret, but this is still an alchemist strat. Yeah, I love that move by the way. Like when teams do it, take mid tower into Roche. Yeah. You've taken top tower. Secret are going to be very hard pressed to defend that, even if they know that it's up top lane. Ex Nova was trying to hide in the trees, popped out at the wrong time here. This is how he makes oh. his way over. He just saunters. He's like, I was a part of this. This is why they first picked me punch, so that I could take two strength for myself. Look at all this deep vision from LGD. Having taken the. The tier one towers, they've got some, you know, this top ward, they've got this off lane ward as well, the off lane jungle ward. So they can get a pretty good idea of where the alchemist is. If he's not in the off lane jungle and they see deep into the lane, then they know that he's probably right here by the shrine area. I would uh, imagine they take a fight right now. Yeah, and you might as well, right? You, yeah. you know that uh, the alchemist is probably up there. Time to go for a smoke. You've got the ages too. 
And that Radiance is coming in so close. If they could delay it another minute or so, it would be a big win. But Yapsor has positioned himself. He's going to run to the smoke first. Now, he may be caught. They're going to roll in from the storm tier. Mila gets hexed up, actually. Now he's going to be bit by Zai, but Zai is not strong enough to kill a storm tier in that small window of time. Ame quickly helps get that kill. They're going to be able to run down the Witch Doctor as well. LGD to completely take over this jungle area. And they still find Nisha as well. Nisha dies. Oh, that should not that have happened. Definitely should not have happened. That should have been a pick off on Zai. It should have been a pick off on one of the supports, and that's it. Yes, that was him running in after the fact, and uh, that's going to make it a lot easier now for them to take control of this jungle area. I really like what they're doing here. LGD is playing a much faster game, a more purposeful game than they did in the last one. Yeah. Uh, this is going to force mid one now to the triangle, which he's not going to hate. He's got to be a little bit careful about ward vision, which is why they place like four different sentries down here to make absolute sure that he's not under vision. Uh, and the majority of the smokes are going to come out of uh, out of LGD's hands, just because, I mean, secret, they're going to use it here, but not really sure what they're hoping to find, because if they just run into the Ursa with Aegis, well. hoping that he tries to go for the bounty rune, and that's in fact going to be bounty the rune time. They are going to be able to grab two here, and are they just going to leave Zai? I think they are. They're going to try to do some damage to Ame, but this is a disaster for Secret now. It turned as a desperate smoke to be able to secure two bounty runes, and it turns against oh, they them. See they see mid one. They want him. They want him real badly. Ax Nova. They've got wards. Trying to too. make his way through. Creeps just drops the wards to spot mid one. Any way they can to make sure he's not teleporting out. And they will be able to get that kill. Now, Yapsor did steal ball lightning. So he will be able to zip away from the storm sphere. He'll be fine. Yeah, I think they were hoping to find somebody else at that bounty rune. Yeah. Like they were thinking to themselves, uh, I think the logic was you have to take some sort of fight and get some kills to reset the the uh, timing on everything that LGD does. Maybe they assume like Ursa's top because they just taken the tier two. Mm -hmm. And like maybe Furion will go bottom. We'll kill the Furion, we'll get two bounty runes, it'll be a big kill. We'll get out this jungle area. Yeah. Then we'll allow mid one to push in this lane. Like we'll secure a lot. I think conceptually the move is actually quite smart. Yeah. But LGD, this has always been for me anyways, this game is like who's slightly smarter. Like when uh Secret made the move to defend in mid tower originally. Mm -hmm. Uh and now it's LGD that strike back with Ame saying, I have Aegis, like, this is the scariest part of the map to be in. This bottom area, guys, for Radiant, is so scary. You have no vision, you're sort of just walking in blind, but because you're an Aegis Ursa, that doesn't die very easily to any of their heroes. Oh, good hook! Thanks to the ward, they're going to be able to catch it. Snowfa who turns around immediately shackles up Nisha. Nisha is actually in a lot of trouble here, taking so much damage. The Echo Slam comes out from FY. They need a little bit more, and that'll be enough. They get Nisha. And Echo Slam stolen by Yapsor. That doesn't do a ton of damage. FY is a little bit low with the Maladies. He will actually take out here. But now here comes maybe. Zai's already dead. Puppy standing and fighting against Ami. But now he's going to fall. Yapsor can't make it out alive either. That's four dead from Team Secret. And now they've spotted mid one who has the Spirit Vessel on him. He's not regening at all. He's going to pop the right near the end of this a desperate maneuver for a desperate team and a desperate player but secret are going to get wiped here and lgd looking like they are indeed going to strike back against team secret looking like they should be able to close this out and make it a 1-1 series all three of the cores are incredibly farmed uh they've got a net worth lead against an alchemist they have playmakers is the main thing they have heroes that can do stuff i felt like you remember what i told you pre-draft i was like i want something like monkey that can just that can yeah. fight early. Like, you need something that can fight early on Seeker because you already have this morph, uh, this pudge. Like, pick, give me a hero that can fight. You don't necessarily need something that can absolutely secure late game because uh, Nisha will do that for you on the morph anyways. And I love this series tells the story of these differing ideas of yeah. strategy and what it looks good and what, what it looks like when it goes bad. Oh, yeah, for sure. And right now we're seeing, like, what it can look like, at least in the mid game, because I, I, I still see a way that Secret can win this game yeah. if this AWP gets found enough. But at least for now, like, this it's has always been the shot. this has always been the blueprint on how to beat Secret is, like, punish their greed and play very fast, aggressive, don't respect them, take very decisive moves. Like, for example, when they took the mid tower, Ame immediately walks into Roshan Pit. No hesitation, doesn't even smoke for it. He's like, I'm just going to straight up do this. What are you going to do to stop me? You have an AWP, he can't fight. You have a Pudge, he's level 6, like, what, are, what is anybody going to do right now? Blink away to the high ground. Secret are instead going to go for Chalice's Furion, but there is going to be the Fisher slowing things down. Zai does manage to grab the Shadow Shaman X. Nova's in a little bit of trouble, he will end up going down, but maybe he's already killed two of the supports, and now he's going for Zai, leaving him for last here with the double damage. That'll help him get the kill. Double for maybe. Maybe he's got a DD, this is going to be a free tier 2. 
They've almost got uh, some components of EKB for Ame. They've almost got the Orchid fully completed now uh, on maybe. This is going to be his morph counter. Like, if you see how far behind Nisha is, and this is when Storm is really good against Morph, yeah. when Morph can no longer play in the lanes. You can't play it like this 1000 HP because Storm zips in, you can precast Orchid on you, you'll die every time. We also said that LGD playing their four protect one last game. We said this is what it looks like when it looks bad, when your four can't fight. In this game, LGD's four is so strong, they can easily take a four on five. And then that 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 fifth that they're they're protecting, that storm spirit, he just zips in and cleans up kills when he wants to. Yeah. That's my favorite part about the strat too, is that uh, they have so many heroes that can just run in and tank a fight, and then Storm can kind of pick his battles. I'd say the worst thing about a storm is like when you have to be the one to solo initiate in and everyone could just thereby focus you. Yeah. Because LGD have multiple heroes that can make the jump first for him, the Earthshaker, the Nature Prophet, uh, the Shaman even, and the Ursa, they just sort of run it the side of Secret. Secret has to use some of their abilities more defensively. And once you commit these like single target stuns uh, out from Secret, it becomes a lot easier for maybe to play this game. Look at that. They have so much deep vision on the top half of the map. There's three different wards up there. <laughs> one in lane, one in the jungle, and one inside the base that this time around they four-man bottom and leave Fury on to get the two bounty runes top because they know there's no way Secret could get up there. Only way they can is if they smoke inside their fountain and run all the way through. Secret just left with the small little eighth of the map where they're able to farm a little bit of their offlane jungle, a little bit of mid and bottom. Basically, whatever pushes into their base. Meanwhile, LGD spread far and wide across the map. Getting a lot more farm, building a lot more net worth over Secret right now, whose Alchemist is still ahead of everyone else, is sitting at 14,000. But Nisha is the real carry. He's the harder carry going in later into the game, and he's sitting at 7,500 net worth. That's a good 2 to 3k below the cores of LGD. Man, that, that move top in the jungle where he just kind of walked in after they had all died hurt his game so much. Yeah. That actually slowed down things considerably. They lost so much map control. Uh, and then there's they're smoke into the Aegis Ursa is another bad one because that was the timing of the Radiant. Yeah, it's one of those things like, like where oh. Secret... Uh, it works when you lose just puppy to these kinds of ganks. Yeah. Like we saw last game. It's just like, well... Secret's concept is, you'll kill him, but we'll just farm more. As a result, you'll be together as five for a while, or as we'll get more on the map. But losing three heroes to that smoke. I do really like the fact that LGD did not back down from the Pudge. When I saw the initial part of the draft, I was like, oh, did you really want to give up that Pudge again? It looks so good. But they said, you know, I think they thought we, we have a really good yeah. answer in the Ursa. Like, there's a big weakness. Like, let's just calm down, guys, and remember that there's a reason Pudge hasn't hit mm. so much. I think it was more like, guys, uh, I don't think Pudge was the reason we lost. I think it's more because we were just garbage. Like, we, <laughs> we probably messed that draft up quite a bit, and we probably played quite badly, so let's just run that back. Because sometimes captains will get really stubborn, and, you know, it'd, be, it'd look embarrassing if LGD just got worked this game, right? Yeah. But it would also suck for every team to have to start banning Pudge, which is what Puppy, I think, is trying to get people to do. By first two, it's like the meta for the tournament now. Yeah. It's the new draw for them, I think. It's like, well, if you ban the draw, then, you know, at least we'll get Rubik for Yapsar every game, and now, like, we'll pick this Pudge first two. We'll pick it early and earlier, and make you think that this is a focal, like, must pick on our lineup. And now every team has to just blind respect it, and maybe we'll start getting, like, more morphs, more draws. Like, we'll open up the draft for ourselves overall. You'll have to let something slip as a result, which I think is a really cool concept and way to draft. And now you're going to get the Aegis on the uh, Storm Spirit, which I think is the best Aegis carrier in Dota. Yeah, the, t the 12 minute Aegis on Storm Spirit may not be that good, but no, 23 minute Aegis, that's that's a good sweep. That's right two there. pools that you get to play with. Uh, I will say, by the way, we're being a little bit defeatist on Secrets lineup, saying like, ah, you know, they're red like a book. But again, I can still see a way that they can win this game. All right, give me give me that story then. Uh, I think they just have to kite back the storm. You just really have to kill him uh, with this Aegis timer when he gets too aggressive. If their uh. team dives or something like that. Secret's lineup is quite nice. Like As the game goes later, obviously, they have Alkmorph. They have really good Ags givers, too. I they mean, just Tsunami have... said 
past 35 minutes. Game yep. goes past 35 minutes. Secret is one. Uh, I think it's a bit longer than that. Well, we're just optimistic thinking. Poor puppy dies again. I think it's like probably 45 minutes. Yeah. And then the storm and the Ursa will really fall off. Like, if they haven't taken Rax by then, I think things are rough. What happened here? Poor oh. Nova got uh, pulled in by Zai. There's yeah, no other he's reason it. he's inside of the base right now. So good. That's nice. That'll pull things up. down. Yeah. That'll allow your elf to get another few waves. And I believe that is the BKB on the morph. I saw him go for Lincolns, and I was like, are you really thinking about that? Yeah. Because the storm will just use his pull then to break your link. Then he'll orchid right after. And it's almost instantaneous to begin with. BKB probably feels a lot better for these team fights anyway. And you're going to need as much team fight as you're going to get because LGD, I'm sure they're going to go for this final tier two at some point. There's no rush, though, for uh, LGD, right? Like, you can finish up a Vistle Blade. I mean, they're because they're still building more and more of a net worth. Even though it's going later, yes, they're also building a, a larger lead over over Secret. Yeah, I think uh, I think this is one of those, like, 80-20 games, 90-10 at this point. Yeah. It would require LGD to have to mess up to lose this. Well, maybe this is going to be a mess up. They get the chain to save, and he's not nice. going to be able to pop the cheese. That's a big kill. And maybe it's struggling to be able to get anything. And no, he challenged. He TP'd into this thinking this was going to be a good fight. But now the Glimmer Cape's not going to save. And the Sprout might be able to do. He goes for the teleport out, but he gets hit by the stun. The TP gets stopped. That is two cores dead and a Shadow Shaman kill. That is a massive turnaround. That's a 3,000 net worth just from the fight. And you also now know that the Morphling's going to be able to push out. The Alchemist is going to be able to push out. They're going to farm a lot. That's probably just going to be another 2,000 net worth uh, exchange just purely off of the, the fresh new map that they've got going on. Friends, all you have to do is wait for your storm. Yeah. You'll cancel all channeling spells. Yeah. The Ursa will be able to get his BKB cheese off. Like, that, that is just so unnecessarily risky by LGD. And that's why I was loath to say like 100%. Mm -hmm. I'll still say like 80, 20, 90, 10. Yeah. There's no reason to make that move. Let me just say all LGD has to do is be careful and patient and they should be able to win this game. And that was not a careful or patient move, Cap. No, that certainly wasn't. Oh, look at that. Yeah, sir, still uh, teleport from Chalice when he came in. So great stuff. He will join his team in a bottom lane push. And sure enough, that's already 2,000 net worth. They went from 7K now to 5K off of them pushing in bottom lane, getting a tier one tower. They're going to be able to farm up this Radiant Jungle. I like that they, even though they have greedy heroes, they didn't build greedy, by the way, on secret. Yeah. Because they thought to themselves, like, we might just straight up lose the game. So we need BKBs. And that's exactly what they went for. It'll hamper their later game, because now this Alk doesn't have Octarine as fast as he wants, but it makes it, it ensures that the game doesn't just end in the next fight, or that they at least give themselves the opportunity to win the next fight. So you said, you know, be patient for LGD. Obviously, they screwed up. They have a minute on the Aegis. Are you, like, are you rushing to make use of that, or are you good with waiting for the third Roshan? Are you waiting for 30, you know, 35, 37 minutes to push high ground? It's kind of a little bit close on the timeline here, right? As we're going to have a long jump in. They're going to be able to catch Nisha for the moment. They managed to get the silence off on him, but now the Maledict on maybe in a lower mana pool may force him back, especially with the Shrine keeping Puppy alive right now. They do manage to get the silence. 30 seconds on that Aegis, maybe, who is trying to make a team fight happen out of it. Zai actually goes for the pull onto Ame. Ame turns around, immediately pops BKB, Echo Slam on the side. Alchemist is actually going to stun himself here as well. That'll be the death. <laughs> of Midwan and the death of Zion looks like as well as maybe pushes forward. 12 seconds on that Aegis. He's either going to get the regen or he's going to lose this life. It's somewhere deep inside of Secret Space. FY jumping in, trying to finish off this uh, this mid uh, this punch, but he's not dead yet. Finally, he takes out. Chalice was able to get the kill off the Wrath of Nature. FY gets turned around on by Nisha. And they're holding. BKB. They are going to be able to finish off the Serpent Wards too, so... Oh, yeah, no, yeah, okay, maybe. He got the fresh regen off the Aegis, so he is able to just jump in with his full mana pool, kill one of the supports. Puppy's still alive, does manage to get off the cast to help Nisha. Spirit Vessel's on Nisha, but he does successfully get back. Look at him, he's actually sticking around to make sure Puppy is going to join him inside the fountain, but it is still LGD owning the base at this point. Six Flip seconds now for the down. out. A tier three to fall, probably a melee Rax as well. No, no, no. Oh, no. Nah, man. Alex back. Alex back. This is what I meant. They held. They held. This was the scariest part of the game for them now. Now, Secret's chances just went up like another 10%. 
not even kidding. Like, despite the fact that it looked like that fight was terrible, which it was, uh -huh. their chances just straight up won another 10%. The fact that they didn't lose the game. Yeah. Uh, you didn't get racks there with the Age of Storm. With the Age of Storm uh, and more BKB timers, like, you're... You're at least holding for a little bit longer. You've extended the game for yourself potentially for another 10 minutes. Seems like LGD's okay with uh, the pace kind of going. They're already looking at uh, that third Roshan potentially. Yeah, the good news for them is that they still have ways to burst mid one. Like the Alk is strong enough, or um, the Ursa is strong enough right now at this point in the game that if he gets on top of the Alchemist, he just straight up dies. What do you think about his, his build? He's not actually going Abyssal, he's going uh, MKB. I like it. I think it's because he realizes that eventually his timer is going to get a lot lower. Yeah. And he needs like he needs more damage. He That's... doesn't need more disable. He just needs more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they have a lot of disable. They've got yeah. uh, they've got the two best disable uh, support pairings in Dota, like Shaman plus Earthshaker. Do you really need more disable than that? Yeah. yeah. Combined, they can put out like 15 straight seconds. On top of that, you just finished a hex oh, this on the challenge. Really big. Look at this setup. Secret are invading into the jungle right now. As the bounty runes are about to spawn, and LGD need to be careful. Ame is actually going to try and go for the kill. It gets Telekinesis first. The pullback of the hook is going to be able to save the Absor for a moment, but long range and stairs keeping Absor stuck. Ame is able to get that kill. And now with the extra members being brought in, such as Chalice, Secret. So you traded the Absor for a BKP charge on Ursa? I'd say that's not terrible. And a lot of tier three damage oh, in the top lane. It looks like Puppy is also going to be dying here. Mid one does manage to get the stun onto the storm, which forces him back. They protect that tier three tower top lane. That's well done. Man, maybe he plays such a good storm. Ah, oh, my bad. I can't host anymore. Uh, oh, no. Maybe he plays a really good storm, though. Like that aggressive maneuver, because the supports always feel safe uh, in their face against Storger. And let me tell you guys, you never are. And I hope you all die at some point for it. <laughs> I mean, because it's so unintuitive to the way Dota works against every other hero. Every other hero, they, they, they're not able to dive the base and not get punished for it, but I love it. Storm Spirit. I, I love it, honestly. Breaking the rules of Dota. I do. I do, Cap. I love it. You have to TP your entire team in just to save Puppy. I mean, Puppy's walking around arrogantly with his two bracers. <laughs> He's in his base. Five. He's got 3,000 net worth. What do you mean? Do you see the way that he itemized? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he, didn't, he doesn't deserve that. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> 11,000 net worth lead right now for LGD. 28 to 16. But we are closing in on that 35-minute marker that Tsunami put out. Let's putting it a little bit later. Probably because the rather large net worth lead by LGD means this game is going to have to go a lot later for Secret. I did say they bought themselves another 10 minutes, which I think I was correct on. Because yes. at minimum, uh, like, if you lose one big fight as LGD, the game turns around. And every team always knows that. Like, you're always one fight away from uh, turning the game around. So you're going to wait for the thing that ensures that one fight to go well. Which is, this is why we see teams be so cautious when yes. they have a lead like this and they just build it and build it and build it. What was that like famous oh. Artosis quote? It's like when you're ahead, you get further ahead. Mm. And the best way to get further ahead is Aegis. And teams always know that. Like every team in Dota knows that, right? It's like, well, yeah. if we want to, if we want to go high ground again, like this is our, you know, like this is the life that we'll use to be able to do so. Ooh, Shiva's now in the storm, so... An extra bit of burst damage. He's got to be able to see all of these heroes, even if they're hiding in the trees. And then on top of that, the turnaround potential gets slimmer and slimmer for Secret. Is oh, now nice. a heavy amount of armor increase for the storm. I like this, by the way. Uh, Alex decided to go for armor now. He really needed it. That's why, yeah. like, going for the BKB, it's nice, and it delays the game from just straight up ending. But you really needed some sort of armor against Ursa Storm. Yeah, you just can't keep on dying to the Ursa straight up. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like, the Ursa BKB charges are important, because while you have them, the Alk can't regen off of you with the Radiance. You don't really care about the mischance or anything like that. Everything just kind of feels nice. Yeah. By the way, Ame is so farmed. And he's done such a good job of keeping up in net worth without a flash farm hero. And it's not even like he's getting, like, an insane amount of kills. Like, 9, 2, and 8 is very impressive. But, you know, he's just farming well. Good farming patterns, hitting a lot of ancients. Yeah, you can see he's way above the average net worth for storms at this time. Aegis, cheese, what, what? and a refresher shard. I'm in Ame, but... 
Yeah, maybe he's great too. He's he's really far. Wait, weren't you talking about Storm? No, nah, no. Nah. Oh shit! I just assumed you were talking about Storm. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> that tells me a lot. Uh, nah, dude, I'm trying not to. This bottom lane though, this push, I don't think this is easily defendable, but mid one's gonna go I can't for believe it. Secret's really going for it. I thought oh, they were just boy. gonna stay in the high ground. They're gonna go for it. Puppy is immediately gonna be targeted here. The echo slam a little bit too late. The BKB went down from Nisha, and Nisha tries to kill off white, but he had the cheese, so he's gonna be able to keep himself alive a little bit longer. Yule Scepter goes down. They had the concoction, slowing down this Ursa as much as possible, but Zai will eventually die. Still though, the two carries of Nisha and mid one aren't going at it, and they are able to kill one of the supports, but now Nisha gets ripped apart between a spirit vessel and Ame's damage. That was an insane they gotta get Ame. First, but they gotta get out of here. They gotta stop Ame from being able to blink away. Nisha will stay on top of him. No Aegis for him. He's gonna come back in his second life. They're gonna get some instant damage. They have the acid as well as the dismember from Zai to make sure that BKB's not gonna do a whole lot. But now look at Storm. He zips back in, gets the Rubik. He sees a very low Alchemist as well at half HP with the Spirit Vessel on him. He's not regening at all and he can't actually get off the concoction. He dies. Zai's up next and they have no buybacks whatsoever. This is looking like the end for Team Secret, not holding on to the high ground. They take a risk. They go outside of their base to defend a tier two to try and catch LGD by surprise. Oh. But LGD had their pants firmly buckled up high. They did not get caught with them down. I am so surprised they decided to take that fight. I was thinking to myself, like, this seems pretty low percentage. And you saw they were trying to all in on the storm there. But, you know, he felt so comfortable in this game that he didn't get a single defensive item. He's like, I'm not dying, guys. I've, Storm has so much armor. He's got 30 armor in this game, 2.5k health. If you don't instantly lock him down, this is what happens. Puppy feeds himself away too. They're getting doubled up on in terms of kills, and their greedy lineup was definitely punished. LGD looking very good with the similar kind of strategy of game one, but executed a lot differently. Different heroes as well. A more active, I would say, carry in Storm Spirit, like, you know, compared to the Naga Siren, who just really couldn't get into the fights ever. Yeah, and this is what, uh, this is what it looks like when Greed gets punished. Yeah. Picking the out after the morph and the heroes that they have. You will not Spirit Scare. Vessel, okay, we're gonna have the meat hook to be able to pull back that alchemist Apparently Secret's gonna be able to defend to the bitter end here Even though they've been mega, there's no tier force up Zai's gonna end up dying here, the Echo Slam's gonna ensure the alchemist doesn't make it out alive either Puppy right outside of his fountain, it's not even safe Nisha comes in to make sure he's gonna join the rest of his team in the grave As they're gonna call GG here for game two <laughs> Maybe even trying to dive Yapsor, but Unfortunately, the throne dies before Yapsor does. LGD does indeed push it to a game three. I really love that they weren't afraid of the punch, by the way.